Welcome back to Time Barbarian again. Um, tonight, let's put in some enemies. We need something to shoot at, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to start with super simple. Let's just put it in enemy number one. There you go. Enemy. And let's just move him over a little bit. There you go. Really missing the ASDF keys all of a sudden, but uh, that's okay. Okay. All right. Let's put a collision on this cat. Let's see here. What do we want? I always use boxes in the original, but that's because I was using AABB's. Um, I'm feeling a circle. Uh, let's see. How are we feeling about this circle? Oops. Can I move the center of the circle? That's an interesting way to edit a circle. How's that? Good enough. While I'm at it, why don't we put one on the player too? Okay. Yeah, we want to be a little generous to the to the player. Maybe a little more generous. I don't want him having too much trouble. Okay. Um, that ought to work. Now, I'm thinking uh, characters will get a rigid body. Kinematic. So I will, that's where it is on the, let's look for that kinematic setting. There we go. So we've got uh, two kinematic characters. I can still steer. Good. Shooting won't do anything yet. Let's prefab these guys. Um, move that laser bullet into a folder. Okay, as long as I have this laser bullet, the laser bullet needs circle collider. Let's put that on there. And I'm thinking, okay. And we want that to be a trigger. So bullets will be a trigger. Characters will be the rigid body. Um. Uh, do bullets then get an on trigger message? I think they do. I think the, the trigger object will get an on trigger message. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if our bullets work. Yep, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. All right, awesome sauce. So uh, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do um, damage? Yes, when we hit, we would call other damage. And we had a whole damage return system and stuff. So I think it makes sense to make a component for that, for the hit points and so forth and damaging. Let's do that, I guess. Um, what are we gonna call it? Hit points? I don't know, let's put, call it hit points. I don't know. We'll call it hit points. Um, 
And what are we going to do with our hit points? We're going to make a public class. Let's get this damage return. There it is. That was just an enum. Okay, we're going to put that then in the hit points class. All right, and game object must have had some kind of damage function on it. Damage. Don't know if I'm going to need, I don't think I need, I'm going to say I don't need these, add them if I do. Okay, there's a hit type class also. There we are. That's also going to be public. Okay. Seems that I do need start to set that up And that'll just be a tweaker, right? Hit points is something that um, we're going to tweak uh, in in there. So we'll need to add this flash stuff later for sure. Um, but let's just get the damage working. Okay, here's the damage, and there's an explode function. Okay. What does delete me do? Yeah, just kills it. Okay. Um. So what are we gonna do on explode? I'm just gonna destroy game object for now. Okay. So that's a hit points class. Uh, and if we put it, you know, I want to put one of those on the enemy. And really, I need to default the hit points to one. Let's do that. Okay. And the player. We'll throw the hit point script on there too. Boom. Okay. And now the bullet. The bullet, when you make contact, you're going to say.
looks like a tweaker to me. How much damage that bullet does. We've hit an enemy, we need to call hit collision dot game object. Boom. Okay, and that will go uh, take us into this virtual function. Uh, that should do the deed. Let's see if it does the deed. Indeed, there you go. You can shoot the enemy now. Boom. All right, cool. Oh, what's this? Ah, right. Okay, bullets do not destroy their game object. They are a pooled object, so they free. Okay, something else. Did I shoot myself? I bet it did. Edit. Project settings. Physics 2D. Here we go. Uh, we need to add more layers. Add a layer. So let's put player. Enemy. Um, player bullet enemy enemy bullet all right we're going to do that and then in here we are going to say that enemy bullet only affects player potentially player bullets i'm going to say no um Enemy is going to interact with player and player bullet. Player bullet is going to interact with um, so an enemy bullet will hit the player, and potentially the player bullets. Okay. Um, great. So the player. is a player. Change children or this object only? I don't know, let's do the whole thing. Enemy is an enemy. Um, laser bullet is a player bullet. Okay. Now I should be able to shoot the enemies and not shoot myself. All right, sweet. Um, let's commit what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and close the Unity down. So we now have enemies and they're shootable. Um, before I end the night, we can maybe do one more thing. Let's do um, wrap around. Wrap around is a big deal, yeah. In the original game, um, as you fly, the world wraps around. Now, I've got that for the backgrounds already, but how about this enemy? How did that even work? I'm thinking that probably happened in just in game object. Um, the base object for my old class was just game object. Yeah, this, this was it. The get screen pause. So, um, I could maybe throw that as a component, and then I could throw that onto things. Why not? 
Why not? Why not? Um, sure. Okay, let's do that. Let's just make another random component here. Let me try to embrace the Unity modality of just making little components to do things. Wrap around. So what does a wrap around do? Let's say it's on late update. Uh, okay, and we're gonna say um, vector three pos equals transform dot and position. Just give me the position of of the guy. Um, and I want to know the distance from the camera. Uh huh. So uh, vector three offset equals camera dot main dot transform dot position is my transform position minus the camera's position and then i'm going to say um what is this just copy this i need a world width in my game manager which is potentially a tweaker right um but I'll make it a static for now. Public static s world width equals it's a float. What was that? It used to be world width was two thousand units. The way I remember this is we divide by roughly ninety. Yeah, I think it was divided by about 90. So what is that? So 22 would be the world width. Um, okay, let's say 22. Point width. Close enough. Let's see, just see how that goes and then we'll adjust it. Um, Do this, and now it's a tweaker after the fact. Okay. Um, yeah. We can live with that, maybe. Uh, okay, so follow camera over here. No, wrap around over here. Uh, let's see here. So, while... Mm, it was game object. Let's just do this. Did I need that? I just say, while the offset is less than the world width, offset plus equals two times the world width, and it's offset, not pos. So this is offset, offset, offset. And these are not these are lowercase x's. And these are not game one world width. I'm going to get float world width equals game manager get s world width, which I have to rename to m world width now. Okay, and then we're going to put world width right there. And then I need to look briefly at y and then I'm gonna say pos equals um, camera dot main dot transform dot position plus offset is that right yeah and then transform dot position equals pos uh, the enemy needs that new script on him. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's watch the enemy's position there. Uh oh, uh oh. We're in an infinite loop. As I edit this, I realize I didn't really explain what I'm up to here. Uh, the game has hit an infinite loop in the C sharp, and that's something that happens from time to time when you're working in Unity. And one of the little quirks of that is that Unity does not provide any way to break that cycle. You can't just, there's no button to just shut it down. Once you're in an infinite loop in C sharp like this, normally you just control alt delete and shut down uh, Unity editor that way. Your other chance is what I'm about to show here, which is you can still connect the debugger and then you can break in. If you can manage to change something within the debugger to unravel that infinite loop, then you can get back, uh, get back control and you don't have to shut down the whole Unity. And so that's what I'm showing right here. I wonder if I can break in. I must be in here. Yeah, okay. Uh, can I break out of it? Uh, yes, if I just can change pos.x to just be zero. Uh, and let's change world width. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Uh, that'll get me out of there, but then it'll immediately call it again. Test manager. Let's change the world width to 2000 or whatever, just a huge number, so that I'm out of my loop now. And I can stop the game. <laughs> there you go. Broke out of the loop. Uh, offset goes there. Enemy, watch his position. Oops. Enemy, watch his position. When he gets far enough off screen. Pop, pop, and there he comes again. He comes in. He should go again and come in on the right hand side. And let's have him go off the other side. Test that. Pop. Excellent. Boom. Uh, and I made it a tweaker in a sense, um, in that. This game manager instantiates itself, and so it's always going to set itself to 22. But you can tune it here once the game is up and running. Let's like let's make it small. Let's say 10. Um, and now that it's 10, the guy should wrap quite rapidly. And even I can make it smaller. I can make it five. We'll see him wrap on screen. Boom, that's very cool, okay. Um, yeah, and so it's it's tunable in that sense, but it won't save, because the next time I launch again, I mean, obviously, but I, there's nothing to tune. And at this point, I'm still happy with that. Um, if we have a lot, of, a lot of tuning parameters and tweakers and stuff that need to go on that game manager, then I'll make a, a prefab for that. But there you go, we got wrapping around. Um, for enemies set up and it's on a little component so the the wraparound and the hit points are separate components so you can see that in my original implementation I used inheritance for all of these things I inherited everything from a class called game object uh, and in my game object class I put a lot of the base behaviors in there so the wraparound and the hit points collision boxes you can see on here um, was all just in the base class uh, as I'm going into this unity project I'm doing it in a more unity way so uh, we can compare and contrast maybe when we're done how those feel in the end so I've got a hit points component and I've got a wraparound component
component. Um, yeah, um, I'm curious how this is gonna play out, you know, as we as we go forward. But yeah, I think that's good for tonight. Um, quick summary: What did we do? We got we got an enemy that's on screen now. Oh, I didn't smack into the enemy yet. Maybe I should. I can't hurt my player yet, though. Um, I can do that later. I can shoot. I can shoot the enemies. Uh, I made collision layers, so um, right. Uh, so the bullets, my bullets won't hit me. Player bullets do hit enemies. Enemy bullets won't hit each other. Uh, set that up, um, and we've got the wrapping around behavior. So I'm not sure what we'll do next. Maybe we will do enemy spawners next. Uh, enemy spawn sequence. Um, enemy behavior. Got to get the enemies moving around and shooting. Um, yeah, maybe enemy enemy moving around and shooting is next, um, which would mean I have to like explode myself too. Um, yeah, that sounds like something we can take on. All right, I will see you then.